Good evening and welcome to the Council Redi Residential Districting Commission's Northside Regional Meeting. My name is Malik Moore and I'm the Commission Chair. With me today are my fellow commissioners. We have Jeff Cabot, Avery Frost, Monica Serizuela, and David Paul. The Council Residential Districting Commission is a collective of residents formed to draw maps creating nine residential districts here in Columbus. We are very excited to be here on the north side of town to hear from you. And we look forward to hearing the ways in which you describe your neighborhoods. The ways that you become more familiar about which area commissions or civic commission or association you belong. And so these questions and more are what we hope to have answered here today, as well as having an opportunity to receive general feedback on the 2021 districting process. We're doing this work right now ahead of drawing the first drafts of the city district maps to ensure that we know what matters most to those who live in these communities and to uh, also know what matters most about your city, our community, and hoping to, under, hoping to also better understand why you feel the way you do about your community. So I just wanna share a reminder that this meeting is currently live on Facebook YouTube, and CTV, Columbus's government television channel three. Um, we'll have time today for all voices to be heard. We will be soliciting the feedback of those attendees who are joining us through WebEx. And we will also have opportunities to hear from folks later on in the meeting um, that are coming in through WebEx. If you're viewing this meeting tonight through Facebook or YouTube, I ask that you please write your questions and your thoughts in the comment section. Um, we'll, we will also address those questions as well. So which, whichever way you are joining us today, your comments and your voice are part of our overall feedback and your voice is heard. So during the first two meetings uh, of this year, we heard from local speakers about a few different topics relevant to our districting work. Um, and if you want, you can even go back and watch any of these presentations. These links can be found in these recordings um, if you go to www.columbus.gov backslash districting commission, um, on that webpage, you can find any of our previous uh, meeting videos. And so my fellow commissioners will now briefly highlight some of the key points and the things we gained from these presentations. So Avery, would you go ahead with the uh, Voting Rights Act? Yeah, so we heard a presentation on the Voting Rights Act from Kyle Strickland. Uh, where he went over um, some of the requirements, such as our city is required to have districts that are drawn fairly, considering the racial makeup and the diversity of the proposed district. Additionally, um, gerrymandering, aka packing, is something to avoid in our work. We want our districts to be proportionate to the electorate. Thank you, Commissioner um, Prosper. Thank you, Commissioner Frost. And next, we're going to hear from Commissioner Kevin. Thank you, Chair Moore. Uh, we also had a presentation by David Huey uh, telling us that there are currently 21 area commissions recognized by the City of Columbus and supported by the Department of Neighborhoods. There are also hundreds of civic associations, block watch groups, and other organizations throughout the city. These organizations organizations serve as catalysts to change not only in their neighborhoods, but at City Hall and beyond. Thank you, Commissioner Cabby. Commissioner Serizuela. Thank you, Chair Moore. Uh, we also heard a presentation by Kevin Wheeler and Mark Trevillis on Columbus growth patterns. So we learned that redlining and the construction of the interstate system drastically altered some of our neighborhoods, specifically our, our neighborhoods of color and the effects of which we can still see today. Columbus has also grown substantially and continues to be one of the fastest growing cities in the Midwest. Thank you so much, Commissioner Serizuela. And last but definitely not least, Commissioner Paul. Thank you, Chair Moore. Uh, we had a presentation on Columbus neighborhoods by Doreen Uhas Sauer, uh, who among other uh, affiliations is with the Columbus Landmarks Foundation. And she talked about our Ohio neighborhoods, how diverse they are and how they've transformed over the years. Each part of town has its own unique history that has shaped what we see today. 
We recognize that it's important to consider the differences and similarities between neighborhoods when drawing these districts, and her presentation helped us gain an appreciation for that. Chair Moore. Thanks again, Thanks. Commissioner Paul. And I want to remind all in attendance this evening that you can indeed review each and every one of these presentations in full at the CRDC webpage. So before we move into the main discussions this evening, we have a short presentation from Naya Walters, our in-house counsel and legal analyst um, of Columbus City Council. She's here tonight to teach us about the residential districting survey that we're promoting in conjunction with these weekly, weekly meetings. Naya, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. My name is Naya Walters and I am the project lead for the Council Residential Districting Commission. Tonight, I will be introducing our survey this survey is designed to solicit feedback from you, our residents, on what you think is important for the CRDC to consider when they are drafting the maps that will produce nine residential districts for council. This is a historical moment for our city, and we cannot do it without hearing from the voices that matter most. This survey consists of general and specific questions around districting, as well as demographic information. There are a couple ways to access the survey. You can visit the CRDC website at www.columbus.gov forward slash districting commission, or you can go directly to the survey link at www.surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash Columbus districts. Your participation in this survey and this process will help to ensure that the final map is a reflection of the community's voice. At this time, I will do a quick screen share of where you can uh, reach the survey. Give me one second, please. Ms. Burks, can I have screen sharing capabilities? You have it. Go right ahead. So as you can see here, this is columbus.gov forward slash districting commission. This is a districting commission website where you can find all information related to the districting commission, uh, more information about the members, our meeting videos, and alas, our survey. So here's the survey. You can click right there at that link and it will take you to the directly, directly to survey monkey. So you can complete the survey. It is a quick survey and we would appreciate your feedback. And if you would like to just go directly to the survey, um, again, you will use the survey monkey link, surveymonkey.com forward slash R Columbus districts, and you can begin the survey there. And that is all for me. Thank you for um, your participation in advance. And that is all. Thank you, Attorney Walters. And I hope that everyone here will go ahead and use that link and complete the survey. And again, I'm going to give us a reminder one final time in case you didn't get it. You can access that survey at www columbus.gov backslash districting commission. So to kick off our discussion this evening, this evening, we've invited a few area commission chairs from the North region of town. Um, they're here tonight to speak and to share with us their thoughts about districting, what is most important to their organization and anything else relevant to the work of the CRDC. This evening, we have a larger list of speakers so I'm gonna encourage each of our speakers to please try to keep your uh, comments down to three minutes so that we can not only make space for you, but for those residents who have joined us and wanna have their voices heard this evening as well. Um, first up to speak, we have BJ White coming to us from the Clintonville Area Commission. Commissioner. Hi there, thank you to the members of the Council Residential Districting Commission for the opportunity to speak. Happy to be here with you all as things get back to normal. Much in the way that Clintonville Area Commission is partitioned into nine districts, I believe that this will be a positive change for ease of efficacy for both the community and the delegate assigned to the representative uh, to the respective district. The popularly trending buzzword of accountability will hopefully highlight the actionable tasks needed to resolve an issue or the concerns of the community and recognize the effort, the successes, or the continuum of progress. It also lays the, con it also lays the groundwork to bolster the role of the ever-improving 311 system in that it's sophistication. The intersectionality of the citizen-driven platform like 311 and citizens engaging the Clintonville or the, the area commissions is often to <clears throat> is often to track, uh, is often tough to track 
once the issue is reported, escalated, or does not complete the 360 degree circle of communication. I think we all know that what gets tracked gets done. If an elected official is assigned to an area based upon geographic parameters, it seems logical and more efficacious for a more favorable result in the column for the community. For, ex for example, an issue associated with utilities might also be related to public services. So why isn't there one point of contact for that? So I think the Clintonville Area Commission and the residents, the 35,000 people who reside in Clintonville would support this initiative and hope that it's done equitably, fairly, and mostly with community input. Thank you. Again, thank you, Commissioner White. Thank you for uh, what you shared and thank you for being succinct. Um, do we have Doreen Uhau Sauer on the call this evening? Having not heard her, we're gonna move to Jenny Frankhart from Italian Village, the Italian Village Society. Um, Jenny Frankhart, the floor is yours. Hi there, oh, can you guys see me okay? Um, great, yeah, so I'm the president of the Italian Village Society. Um, Italian Village uh, is about 2,400 people. Um, it spans from the north side of High Street on the west to the Conrail tracks on the east, um, to East Fifth Avenue um, on the north, and then Interstate 670 on the south. Um, we have a growing population um, that is extremely uh, diverse, and that is um, kind of a, a sector that we'd like to maintain um, through this redistricting process. Um, we also interface, we're a little bit unique as a civic association because we also interface with two special improvement districts, both the Short North and the new 54 Sid. Um, we are an incredibly strong community um, of both mixed use um, structures and, and local business owners, um, as well as just dedicated neighbors. Um, you'll see that in some of the events we host and the community involvement and engagement um, that we have in our neighborhood. Um, Italian Village was first created um, in 1862 and the Italian Village Society um, was formed uh, in 1972 by residents and business owners. Um, and maintaining that legacy is extremely important to um, not only the Italian Village Society, but um, kind of everyone throughout the Short North community. Um, and with the interfacing of the Special Improvement District, I think it's important that we, um, and kind of the, the certain parameters that we have as a community, I think it's incredibly important to us that we don't lose our identity as Italian Village. Um, and so maintaining Italian Village um, and the legacy that's been here, both from working class populations um, through this dynamic growth that we've seen over the last couple of years, um, there's just a huge legacy that we wanna maintain. And um, we're doing that through an archival project right now. Um, and, and that identity piece, again, is very important to the residents here. Um, we do have an area commission um, that oversees the architecture um, for the area, as well as just kind of the, the aesthetic of, of what our neighborhood development looks like in that growth. Um, so again, those identity pieces of who we are and, and what Italian Village is, is extremely important um, for this consideration. Jenny Frankhart, thank you so much for sharing those things about Italian Village. I'm grateful. Next up, we have from the North Central Area Commission, uh, Ms. Tiffany White. Is Ms. Tiffany White available? All right, having not heard from Tiffany White, I'm gonna move on to the Northwest Civic Association where we're hearing tonight from Cheryl Grossman. Cheryl Grossman, are you available? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for making time for us tonight. The floor is yours. Um, I have not a prepared remarks, but I did note that we are actually invisible um, in the uh, uh, presentation that was given about Columbus neighborhoods. Uh, when neighborhoods in Columbus are listed, Northwest and even parts of Northwest is are not listed at all. And uh, I, I, I feel that we need to um, try to make sure that we um, develop uh, more of an identity. We'd like to do that. And that uh, we sh a, a section of Columbus, which has more than 70,000 people in it, 
should not be as invisible as we are. And uh, that's really all I have to say. Well, yes, uh, Commissioner Paul, please. Ms. Ms. Grossman, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, hopefully you can. I just wanted to mention that, uh, of course, we're in a similar situation in the Northland area with the Northland Community Council. And I think we did spend a little bit of time talking about the fact that there are sections of the city that are not, strictly speaking, represented by area commissions. Uh, and Northwest is one of them. Uh, there, in many cases, we consist, consider uh, your uh, association to be sort of our peer uh, as a non-area commission that does very similar and we think good work uh, in working with the city along with area commissions. So uh, I think I can speak for my fellow commissioners in saying we haven't lost sight of that. We know that, uh, that there are other groups such as yours and Northland that don't appear on the area commission map. One tool that to get a sense of these that we're, um, that we're happy that you're here and we have representatives from North. And I think I stressed actually at the last meeting, just that we keep in mind the folks who do not have any, any commission or large group or civic council like yours and ours in Northland uh, representing them. We're still intending and being intentional about being fair to them and including them in our discussions and in the maps uh, that we produce or uh, at least suggest the council. So thank you, Chair Moore. No, thank you, okay. Commissioner Paul. And uh, I just should share for the good of the order that uh, for the last six years prior to living where I live in Hilltop, I uh, I lived in the Northwest uh, area. So I, uh, I understand the value and the richness of that community. We do have another comment to be shared by Commissioner Serizuela. So Sarah's, uh, Commissioner Serizuela, the floor is yours. Uh, Chair Moore, is it okay if I ask uh, Ms. Grossman a, a question directly? Please. Uh, Ms. Grossman, um, thank you so much for being with us. Um, of course, we do not want the Northwest to feel like they are um, non-existent or feel invisible. Could you share a little bit more about the residents who reside in the Northwest area? I know in my experience of um, you know, visiting the Northwest area, I find it to be incredibly diverse. Um, so could you share a little bit more about that? It, it is it is quite diverse. Um, I, I can't give you a chapter and verse about um, what there is, but we do have um, we have a, a whole shopping center which is almost centered around uh, Japanese culture, for instance. We do we have the airport plunked sort of right in the middle. and that kind of makes for an interesting um, uh, surroundings because there's a section that's south, just you know the park that's just north of uh, Upper Arlington. And we're we're one part, and then there's other parts that kind of surround the airport. Um, there's a, a variety of different people. We have quite a bit of apartment buildings, especially more recently, and that makes it a little difficult to get a handle on who exactly is here, uh, because um, and we have a lot of uh, small uh, neighbor uh, groups that you know the developments you might say. Um, uh, Misty Meadows, uh, the Gables, uh, the Knolls, um, and we have uh, some issues with with uh, traffic, and uh, because we're part of that corridor, the Northwest Corridor, and we do need to um, have development that will facilitate uh, a neighborhood, because uh, many of the things that have been built in our area recently are more like um, just a big block of apartments with people in them sort of plopped in the middle of the area, but they don't integrate with the neighborhood very well. So um, that is something that I'm concerned about is that we we, we have an, an issue with uh, building more, um, you know, finding places for more people, more affordable housing, more transit um, corridor, but we also need uh, to have something that facilitates neighborliness and interaction between these various like small developments that are sort of self-contained and they have their own civic associations. Uh, like Bethel Village has their own civic association, I believe. Great, thank you. I don't know if that's helpful, I hope so. Ms. Grossman, they were great insights and uh, 
you accurately summarized the Northwest area. Um, one of the best areas in Columbus, I would say, to find food and, and diverse groceries. So yes, um, for the good of the order, I wanna move us on to our next speaker. Next up we have representing the Far Northwest Coalition. We have Aaron Newman. Aaron Newman, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Chair Moore. Thank you, Commission members uh, and all the city folks on for helping put this together. Uh, I'll keep my remarks short. I'm afraid I'm outside and not very conducive area to speaking, but um, I do appreciate the uh, districting uh, initiative in general. I think um, I, I'd certainly echo perhaps uh, our neighbor, uh, Ms. Grossman's comments that uh, up in you know the Northwest and the far Northwest, we can't feel a little bit invisible. We're nice big areas with uh, lots of families and growing businesses. Um, and we will welcome the opportunity after districting, hopefully to have uh, not only a better say or, or more integrated say in how city government functions and um, how city services are allocated to our area. Uh, but I know our citizens are also interested in and in, in welcome the opportunity to become more engaged in the, the government. And um, I think uh, having an elected representative from our from our own neighborhoods will certainly help that out, uh, especially in, in the far northwest where such a, a unique area for, you know, all city residents. But we have some township neighbors mixed in. We have uh, we're split between Worthington and Dublin schools. And uh, most of us have a Powell mailing address. So uh, it's a little confusing at times. And I think having an elected member uh, of city council downtown will, will help us all, uh, again, get a, a bit of an identity and, and stay more engaged with the city government. So uh, once again, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, look forward to further engagement as the process moves along. OK, um, Mr. Newman, I want to open up uh, the floor for any other commissioners that may have questions. But I did hear from your neighbor at the Northwest Civic Association that she said that, that there's more than 70,000 people in that Northwest uh, area that she calls home. Um, what would you say, do you have a rough number for the far Northwest? Um, what, what numbers we're looking at? I don't have anything current. We had um, uh, one of our friends from Mortsy out back in, I guess, 2017, 2018. Um, he gave us numbers. Uh, it wasn't the exact area. I think he had a bit from south of 161, but he noted it was about 50 to 60,000. And of course, um, that was just the baseline. And he was looking ahead, and we're we're looking to you know get plenty more than that over the next couple of decades. Excellent. So uh, well, yeah, we're looking forward to to growing even more. Thank you so much for sharing this evening, Mr. Newman. Commissioners, any comments? We do have one question coming to you from Commissioner Frost, one moment. Good evening, thank you for being here today. Um, just a quick question, when we're talking about kind of where this area is on a map, if you could orient us a little bit. Um, so I would, I, you said something about south of 161, so I'd assume north of 161, but what are your, um, kind of where are you on a map? Sure, happy to, uh, happy to draw that out. So we're a rough rectangle. Um, bordered by Sawmill Road on the west, so on the other side is Dublin, and then the Franklin County line to the north, uh, the Olentangy River to the east, and then uh, State Route 161 or West Dublin Granville Road to the south. Uh, so again, it's, it's a rough rectangle of Columbus, and then we have some Perry Township and a little Sharon Township uh, carved out of that. But, awesome. uh, you know, well developed, um, a lot of residences and a uh, good amount of shopping too. Cool, thank you very much, thank that you. was very helpful. Thank you. That was indeed, thanks again, Mr. Newman. And now we get to hear from uh, Madam President, uh, Alicia Ward coming to us from the Northland Community Council. Madam President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and good evening, everyone. Um, I think this redistricting has the uh, potential to be very beneficial to Columbus neighborhoods because each of our neighborhoods is very unique in their assets and their challenges. Here in Northland, we represent about 135,000 residents and a 25 square mile area of Northeast Columbus. Um, and uh, the, the um, 
issues uh, and challenges and benefits that we face here are, are pretty unique um, to Northland um, because we have such a great population of new Americans, both refugees and immigrants who have chosen to make Northland their home. Uh, Northland is the largest second migration of Bhutanese Nepali population in the country and the second largest of Somali population, as well as a thriving Ghanaian community and many others. And we're all living and working peaceably side by side with people whose families have been here for many generations. And this, this makes Northland just a, a rich cultural um, hub um, here in Columbus. Um, where you can walk into a store or a restaurant and kind of feel like you're stepping through a porthole into a different country. It's really unique and amazing. And I encourage everybody to come here and, and um, experience it for yourself. Um, but this diversity does come with, um, with its own set of challenges. Uh, for instance, there are uh, 11 languages at least spoken here in Northland, which as you can imagine can cause some communication problems. Um, there's uh, some lack of knowledge on procedures or um, laws or codes that um, people just um, are, had not experienced in their country of origin. And so there's a lot of um, just education and um, walking people through those processes that we face here. Um, we are also facing some decline in some of the buildings and roadways in the older parts of Northland. And while, and also in the newer development areas may not have accounted for some of the increase in population and having problems with some of the roads and infrastructures that are there. Um, so these things that are, are, are part of the problems that, that Northland faces. Um, and I, I really believe that by having a member of the uh, on city council that uh, oversees a particular area of Columbus allows them to really help ensure that they understand firsthand the um, they have firsthand knowledge of the needs and in that community and can really help address those needs um, quicker and more efficiently. Um, so I, I really see that this redistricting has the potential to do a lot of good for Columbus. Uh, President Ward, thank you so much for that tour through Northland, um, just giving humanity to the folks that call Northland home and giving us that background to understand the richness of your community. Thank you. Um, commissioners, does anyone else have a question for President Ward at this time? All right, we do have one question coming in at least, and the floor is yours, Commissioner Sarzuela. Uh Thank you, uh, Ms. Ward, for being with us this evening. Um, you had mentioned there are 135,000 residents that, you know, reside and call Northland home. Um, these districts that we are, are charged to draw, um, we're looking at, you know, around 90,000 residents in a district. Um, do you have any thoughts about, you know, ways that Northland could be divided or natural boundaries that we should be thinking of? Um, yeah, I think that that would be <laughs> really kind of difficult to split Northland up, even though we do have kind of two or three different areas that we think of when we think of Northland, um, because we are so um, interactive and um, really work together, uh, all of us do, from, from the, the different uh, civic associations and et cetera, get together and really work on our problems together. And that, that's one of the great things about Northland is that we do try and achieve a, a solutions ourselves to the problems that arise in our areas. And so that would be a little difficult I, for me to, to say. Understood, thank you. And, and to give context before I hand it over to Commissioner Paul, and thank you, Commissioner Cerezuela. One of the stipulations we're working within is making sure that that delta between districts, um, it, it has to be 1% is what we're limited to. So the gap between population for men, any of the districts we propose has to be uh, no larger than 1% larger than any of the other districts. And so uh, that's why she asked you that hard question of how you would split the baby. Um, yes. And so Commissioner Paul had a question as well, Madam President, one moment. Thank you. Uh, hi, Alicia. Uh, we, of course, know each other from Northland and the Northland Community Council. Um, it is, I guess, more of a comment than a question. 
and I, I think you understand this as well. One thing that's important, though, for others to understand that may not be completely clear is that the process that we're undertaking doesn't necessarily mean that groups like the Northland Community Council and others would necessarily be split in any way. Um, what we're talking about are districts from which our city council members would be elected. And of course, that may mean that Northland will end up with two city council members. It probably does mean that in some sense, just because of the size of the area in terms of population. Um, but it does not mean that groups that serve an entire district that already exists will need to change the way they operate, other than the fact they may interface with more than one city council member. Uh, they'll have two that they can work with, uh, maybe more in some cases. Um, although I think we're gonna be trying, that's part of this process, trying to avoid splitting up districts, uh, communities of interest into too many sections. We want to try to keep them as, as uh, intact as possible. So. I just wanted to make sure I don't think it was a confusion on your part, but there may be others who are thinking, uh, you know, they're going to chop up our neighborhood. We're we're uh, trying to be very intentional about not doing that or changing the way other organizations will need to work. Thank you. Fair more. Commissioner Paul, what a great distinction that was um, and you clarifying that up. Um, and, and I hope that was to your, your liking what you heard there, President Ward and uh, um, yes. I, I just wanted to add that, yes, yeah, so Northland's very, very um, used to being kind of uh, represented by several different people. We have like three state representatives and um, two congressmen, et cetera. So, yes, we are, are used to that. That's Excellent. To add. Thanks again for sharing all you did about the, uh, the rich diversity that exists in Northland. Um, our next guest this evening is Andrea Russell coming to us from uh, the North Linden Area Commission. Um, Andrea Russell, the floor is yours. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me all right? We hear you clearly, ma'am. Thank you so much, Commissioner Russell. Thank you so much for this time. I'd like to say good evening to the commission and also good evening to the Area Commission uh, chairs and good evening to the guests and residents of Linden. Um, thank you for this time to uh, ask questions and thank you for this opportunity to speak on the uh, districting um, issue and the plans. And I do have a prepared statement. My name is Andrea Russell. I'm the chair of the North London Area Commission. And uh, I just have a few brief uh, comments that I'd like to make and perhaps um, some questions if I may. Um, in the times uh, that we live, it's crucial to have a social infrastructure with the capability to manage the stresses of a growing community. Building on our strengths while supplanting the barriers gives us an advantage to reach an attainable goal. We are here to discuss the plans to divide the city of Columbus into nine distinct di districts. There are concerns that these districts may pose unforeseen challenges. However, in Linden, as in other areas of Columbus, we have the unique opportunity to be recognized as equal citizens. Our desire to live in an area without flooding, chemical fumes, gunfire, unhealthy grocery options, limited medical care, blowing debris from tenant set outs and illegal dumping should have been realized before now. Residential districting comes at the 11th hour for Linden. The horror of Conrad and the Ellison Invisible has left us searching for solutions. We have the underemployed who yearn to work more hours and have a living wage, but fear losing the benefits of housing and childcare in the convoluted system of balancing, quote, working just enough to get by without giving up the help needed to survive. This is a life for many people in Linden who want better pay but the wages are inadequate to replace the assistance. When the federal government concluded that Linden was the area for immediate attention to abate the water runoff and flooding problems, we were knocked down behind Clintonville. In fact, some of Linden won't receive critical sewer updates until 2030. This is an example of why we need representation in our city government. Yes, there has been recent growth and development in our area. We appreciate the new Linden Rec Center 
and the building initiatives. Our attention is drawn to the future housing crisis and the cost of living expenses for the 40% of the renters in our neighborhood. Already, the homeless have begun setting up encampments on our exits and in our alleyways. This is a sign of worse to come. The time is now to address the surge in housing needs, and we must be at the table to be a part of those decisions. As residents of our beloved Columbus, we don't want, we don't have tea to spill. Regrettably, our youth have replaced it with their blood. We have no more time to wait for answers and deliberations. We have been doing better. We have been making progress. We have been awakened. And it is in all of our best interests, interests to mend this community. Thank you. Thank you for such a, um, just a strong, reflection of, of the things you see as potential and struggles um, that exist here in North Linden. Thank you so much, um, Chair Russell. Um, commissioners, any other questions or any questions we might have of, of the chairwoman at this time? Okay, at this time we have no questions. And again, I thank you for, for what you've shared and um, just helping us to feel what uh, Linden hopes for, North Linden hopes for. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and at this time, we're going to hear from uh, South, the South Linden Area Commission. And tonight, we're hearing from uh, Ms. Sunday Corner. Ms. Sunday Corner, the floor is yours. Okay. Unfortunately, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. And this is the first time I've actually attended. Um, I was hoping to kind of get more detail in regard to what exactly you guys are trying to do. I understand there is a reason redistricting aspect of this, but I am going to be review the previous meeting reference in order to make sure I have a good perspective of what the that, goal outcome. Can I interrupt for one moment, Miss Corner? Um, sadly, I didn't hear about the last 30 seconds of what you said. We have a, a very weak connection, so if you could repeat, and again, I apologize for having missed that, but if you could please repeat what you said. Sure. Can you hear me a little better now? A little better now, yes. Okay, so more or less, I was just explaining that this is the first meeting I have attended, and unfortunately, I need additional details of the actual overall purpose of the meeting. Um, what I have gathered is that you guys are looking to redistrict certain areas, so I will need to go back and review the previous meetings to make sure that I have a clear understanding of what you guys are trying to achieve with this and why this is happening now. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm clear, but I can tell you that my sentiment lies um, with Andrea from the Chair for North Linden Area Commission. What she stated is absolutely true. Um, so I just want to make sure that we are fully represented and that we, you know, we aren't underrepresented in this scenario. Um, but I definitely need to gather additional details to make sure that I have a full understanding in order to provide an informed um, direction for South Linden as well. So hopefully I'm, I'm, you guys can hear that clearly. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did, I did hear, hear that clearly. clearly. Um, however, before I let you leave, I do think that there might be information you could share. There's been several people, several people that have spoken this evening that did not have um, specific details. Um, but what we're trying to get is a level of context as we look at putting, taking Columbus and making nine representative maps. We're trying to figure out where we might be able to join existing neighborhoods, respectful of the history and the borders that define those neighborhoods. Um, and, and, and so tonight having you here speaking shortly after we heard from North Linden, um, you know, what might your reflection be on North Linden and South Linden possibly being joined as a district? This is just a proposal, um, but what you're doing is helping five commissioners that are charged with uh, dividing Columbus up into nine representative districts, um, helping us to understand some of the history of the neighborhood and where there might be natural partnerships or natural lines of division. Does that help to give you a little more context? It actually does. Um, and what I would like to say is I understand that there is a goal to create this one Linden plan or this one Linden aspect. 
Um, Which would be, that would be farly separated from the work we're doing. Um, we're, we're trying to move from an at-large government representation um, and, and help there to be more of a, a, a regional representation in, in, in an effort to make nine representative districts that um, these districts would ultimately have. Yeah, I didn't they would all, the word. I just meant in naming convention only that they're trying to do the one Linden in naming got convention, it. not really the work per se. Um, the only thing that concerns me about that is South Linden has always been underrepresented. Um, even mm -hmm. for the things that transpire within North Linden, North Linden has you know, been privy to a lot more things than what we have been. Um, from different things that the city has provided, you know, we're almost like the redhead stepchild. Um, when we look at the, the division between North and South Linden, and we would like for it to be one Linden, but in that, it concerns me because I feel like we would be underrepresented in that scenario. Um, I, I just... Can I, can I ask if you might, are there other contiguous parts? If we were to figure out what does border South Linden, are there other areas of the community you would feel would be a better way of connecting you to a community where your voice would be heard? Yes, there are. I mean, there are several different aspects of that that I believe would be beneficial. Um, I did hear someone state that, you know, the freeways cut off some of our communities. You know, I always say if we were on the other side of the freeway, our property value would skyrocket. I mean, just from a standpoint of being located just over 71. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess for me more specifically, it's going to be making sure that South Linden does achieve that fair shake. When I look at the property values for North Linden versus South Linden, um, when we look at you know something as small as, and I know Andrea is very close to this, the sewer repair system and you know them putting sump pumps in basements because they're aware that the basements are flooding. All of that has taken place in North Linden and then South Linden isn't even slated for that until like 2030. You know, so it's like if you guys are right here in North Linden, why didn't you go ahead and put it in South Linden as well? So it's a very real concern of us being underrepresented, um, mm -hmm. basically where we're located. But our, our neighbors in North Linden are reaping the benefits of you know getting things done. And I'm not understanding why that is. Um, and that is something that I have been working through since I have come into this seat to get a better understanding of, you know, if this is one Linden in naming or one Linden from a standpoint of what you guys are, not you guys, but what's a, being attempted to be done with, throughout the city, you know, well, give us that same opportunity. Give us those same benefits so that we can reap those benefits also. So there are, you know, I would love, and like I said, I want to look at this more closely because this is the first meeting that I have attended. I want to go back and review um, the previous sessions that you referenced at the beginning of the call. Again, yes, sure I'm not speaking out of turn, um, mm -hmm. but I just need more context, context from what you guys have already discussed. Excellent. Well, tonight was a moment where we gave you the floor and, um, and it, it's not to say this is the last time we could hear from you. Um, as I look around the room now, I'm seeing if any of the commissioners have additional questions they may want to lift up at this time. Um, I do have one other question. So I guess, so there's been, this is the third meeting is what I'm gathering. Um, when it comes to this being the third meeting, how many more meetings are being hosted? And then when is the outcome going to be provided? Um, th this is actually not the third. Um, this must be about our seventh meeting, I believe. We've met on the west side, twice south side. This is our first time on the north side. Um, we will be back on the north side. Um, and so, again, there is a survey link that we've shared weekly, and it's available on the website as well. Um, and so, please, uh, if you could, share with your, your neighbors uh, this link, and let's begin to hear the collective voice of South Linden. And as, as, as you get the opportunity to share how you could see yourself joining to amplify your voice, where, what neighbors would you see helping to amplify your voice? Um, these are things we wanna hear. And, and, and so Commissioner Paul, did I, do, do you, I'm gonna hand the floor to Commissioner Paul for a moment as well. And I'll be back to you, um, Commissioner's Corner. 
Uh, Chair Moore, I'll, I will be as brief as I can because our purpose here tonight obviously is to listen. Um, and so I don't certainly want to be seeming to lecture or whatever. I did want to make sure to share the link for the city's webpage that talks about the entire process and how we got here, uh, starting really with a vote of the electorate in 2018. Is that right? 2018. Uh, to modify the city's charter and it prescribed a process and this commission is part of that process. Um, again, won't spend time going into it because it is documented on the website, uh, which is www.columbus.gov forward slash districting commission, one word. Uh, encourage you to look at that. Um, but uh, again, I understand your concern about, um, you know, how the city may see North Linden and so forth. Our scope is the entire city and trying to make sure that every portion of Columbus is fairly represented by members of city council, uh, perhaps to uh, correct uh, the tendency in the past for city council members to come from one or several areas of the city and make sure that they're uh, distributed throughout the communities of Columbus, uh, which as we've talked about are very diverse geographically and otherwise. Um, so it isn't necessarily related to anything you've heard specific to the Linden community. It is a citywide process. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, cede time back to Chair Moore. I, again, we appreciate yeah. being here. Thank you. Once again, Commissioner Paul, that 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 history gives us great context. Um, Commissioner Corner, I, I hope you feel that we've welcomed you into this process and we invite you to join us at a later meeting if you would. Out of fairness for the process, um, I, I've given each of the chairs and the commissions three minutes. I, I wanted to make sure I allotted you a little more time, um, but at this time I'm gonna move on to the North Central Area Commission um, where we're gonna hear from Tiffany White who is now on the call. Commissioner White, um, you do have the floor, ma'am. Can you hear me? I hear you clearly, thank you. Awesome, thank you. I wanna say um, good evening to all of the commissioners. I've worked with you all in one capacity or another. So this is exciting to see familiar faces um, for this process. I am Tiffany White. I am the chair of the North Central Area Commission. Um, we're small but mighty. Um, we really, as far as the redistricting, um, are looking for a fair drawing of the map more than anything. Um, I think when you look at federal and even state lines, we don't, the squiggly lines, we need something clear and concise um, to keep cohesion between the um, neighborhoods um, um, and keep the diversity um, cohesive, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, the biggest concerns, and I think that almost everyone that is quote unquote, Linden, and I say that because um, when there is a code enforcement violation, we still are listed as South Linden. So if you look at the history of Linden, Linden went pretty much from North Central all the way to North Linden once upon a time. Um, there were lines that were drawn and, and we were divided. And, and as such, I think we work in silos when we should be working together. Um, I agree with Andrea and Sunday that um, we see areas of Columbus that receive more, even though a lot of attention has been focused um, in the South Linden area. Um, infrastructural concerns are concerns that we have. Gentrification is something that we have of concern. Um, we're unique. We don't have high renter uh, populations, we have a 67% home ownership rate. So home ownership is something that um, we're very proud of and um, constructing of new homes is something that we look forward to. Um, we do have concerns about environmental um, issues. Uh, we recently, a few months ago, had the Yinka Majestic explosion um, and we have some concerns as far as what the impact on our neighbors are going to be. Um, we have um, Ohio Dominican University 
Um, Sunbury Road is one of our boundaries. It was the Freedom Trail um, that needs to be recognized and understood um, by whomever takes that seat, that our history is rich um, and we want to preserve it. Um, Amina Robinson, the artist, also has a home in North Central. Um, and um, we have artists coming and going in that area. We are 15 minutes from anything in the city of Columbus. So we are the perfect place for someone to reside. However, we do not have jobs that pay living wages for individuals to work somewhat close to their home. Um, they have to use public transportation and our bus doesn't really get you to where you have to go. Um, you can be on a bus route for two hours if you work as far as Rickenbacker. Um, so transportation is a big concern for us. Um, what I want this commission to take into consideration um, when looking at the map is the concerns of those communities. Do they mesh? Are they going to be in conflict with one another? Um, if there are going to be two or more representatives, are they going to work cohesively with one another? or are they going to work in opposition of one another? Um, and, and that's gonna be really, really important. Um, we need healthcare facilities that don't close at 5 p.m. We have tons of trauma occurring um, in our community and our young people are suffering as a result of it. So those are the things that I'd like you guys to take into consideration. Chairwoman White, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, would you be able to enlighten us a bit on the existing borders that define the North Central area um, and, and who that borders you that you would see um, possibly, to use your term, who might be a good mesh and who might be a neighborhood that's adjacent to you that would bring with it minimal conflict from your perspective? So our, we, we boundary everyone almost. Um, we boundary South Linden, Northeast, Milo, and Near East. I heard Milo, South Linden, Northeast Area Commission. Got it. And Near East Area Commission with Kathleen Bailey. Mm -hmm. So it's a, we're like, we're literally dead center. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't happen to have, and, and please forgive me for asking, I, I don't think anybody would have this number on, on the top of their head. You wouldn't happen to know what the combined population might be of those, oh, that, com of those that combined issues. configuration. Mm -hmm. Near East probably has the largest population. Um, Milo's gonna be the smallest. Maybe combined, we might be mm -hmm. close to 80,000. Okay. Maybe close to that. With all four combined, or Milo, South Linden, Northeast, um, and North Central would be about 80,000 or so? Pretty close, yeah, okay. I would say. I'm not, well, sure, shared what, I'm not sure what Sunday's uh, numbers are. Right. We, we have about 35,000. Like I said, we're small. Mm -hmm. um, we're just tucked in the middle of everything. Yep. Commissioners, anyone else have questions for uh, Chair, Chairwoman White while we have her on? Well, I, I can't thank you enough for making time for us this evening. Um, I don't have any questions from commissioners right now, um, but what you shared will help us in, in this process. So thank you so much for sharing. And so at this time, uh, we're gonna open up to hear from some of our residents that have called in or to screen questions from those who have called in. Let's see here. Do, uh, do we have any residents on, on the call at this time? Are there any attendees that have submitted questions that I'm missing?
Mr. Moore, I don't see any hands raised. Is there a particular person who you're looking for to speak at this time? Ms. Burks, I, I, I do not see any questions um, that have come through, okay. but I didn't want to move on without being certain that we don't have any questions coming in from Facebook or YouTube at this time. And so if we have no hands raised and we're confirming that there are no questions from Facebook or YouTube, um, I do want to remind anyone that is in attendance, I want to give you one last time to know that, um, again, if you're on the call through WebEx, you can raise your hand and that will uh, go ahead and have you called on. And if you're joining us from Facebook or YouTube, you can type your question into the comment bar and it'll be lifted up by one of our representatives um, and we will answer any question it is that you've posed to us. Commissioners, we heard a great deal of information tonight. Okay, we do have, we have one question from a resident right now. Is there a way for this to be shared with everybody who's part of this and rather not just us? Thank you. All right. So anyone that's joining us right now through WebEx, we did have a question come through, um, but we weren't able to amplify it to the level that you all could hear it. So within a moment, we're going to have this question elevated for the good of all who are in attendance online. Chair Moore, while we're uh, getting set up for that, could I just ask uh, uh, both uh, my fellow commissioners and also staff, perhaps it would be good if we briefly were to recap, again, how we got here, how we've been charged with our objective of developing the maps, uh, just to make sure that there isn't confusion um, about uh, the process and the reason the process has been undertaken. Uh, maybe at the beginning of each of our meetings going forward. So, um, yes, I, I welcome you to lead us through that process if you'd like to, Commissioner Paul. Um, having read the process, I'm sometimes confused still, right? Um, but th there is no harm in us doing what, what I reference is layered learning. So, if we want to share once again how we got here and what we hope to do, I'm going to hand the floor over to you, Commissioner Paul. Well, I wasn't necessarily proposing to do it now, but I'm saying it was proposing at the beginning of each of our future meetings to kind of recap this. Thank you, though. Understood. Yes, sir. We will. That is noted and on the record um, for our next two meetings, just doing a recap so we all understand where we are, um, what the chart of work is before us, and what we hope to have as a finished product as a result of the work that we, we do. Um, do we have our caller? All right, we do have a moment. And so while we're waiting for this caller to come through, commissioners, we, we've had a lot of information here that we, we're gonna sit with and process. Um, is there anything at the top of mind that any of you are hearing or anything that you um, want to share um, is, is a thought that you're processing or wrestling with at this time related to anything we heard today? Yes, Commissioner Frost. Yeah, just thinking about um, what we heard from the South Linden Commission. Um, one thing that I might uh, wonder if we could do um, is touch base back through the commissions of the areas that we've already gone through. Um, some folks might not have heard about it for a variety of reasons. And so perhaps at one of the, the last meetings that we have, there might be an opportunity to, for people who missed their, their particular quadrant. Um, just to make sure that we hear everybody's voices in person, as well as I just hope everybody goes and uh, completes that survey. I think that's a great idea of making an intentional effort to reach back to some of the communities um, that we clearly see that their voice may not have been um, lifted up or heard. So it looks like I have a question from Aaron Newman. 
Aaron Newman, the floor is yours once again, sir. Uh, thank you again, Chair Moore, and apologies again for the noise. Um, just a quick, two quick questions, actually. Uh, would you mind, and apologies if I missed it, but just reviewing the next steps for the survey, how long it's going to be open, uh, what will be done with the results? And then uh, on a related note to that, I noticed that the Far Northwest Coalition wasn't among the drop-down options for the um, area commissions and associations and whatnot. I was curious if we might be able to add that in, and, and we'll be happy to promote it up in the Far Northwest. Thank you. So can I ask you, um, did you, Mr. Newman, did you see a, a, a category of other within that survey link? I did, and, and that's what I okay. select. Okay, um, and if I have the ability to have that modified in the meantime, I'm, I'm definitely going to share that that was requested. Um, and so th the surveys help us to see what communities are, are, are saying, in essence, right? And it's going to add to the level or, or, or the amount of data we have, the process. Again, our, our end goal is that we're gonna come up with nine maps that we pro promote or we then share with the city um, that are gonna take us from our current at-large representation model and move us closer to district representation. Um, and so that is, you know, your work in that survey is taking us closer to that end result. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, and um, just, uh, I guess, the, the end date or the close date, is that set? Um, July, so on 2 of July, 2021, the survey link will no longer be operational. So we have until the 2nd of July to complete those. Um, and many times it's folks in your position, Mr. Newman, that have a better reach into your community. Um, and, and as we've heard, a multiple number of times this evening, there's communities who feel that they have a large number of people and they also feel that they have representation, but we've heard other communities sharing that they don't believe that their voice is being lifted up. This survey might be one way to reflect the level of representation we have in each of the areas that we're hearing from. So um, if you would please promote use of that survey to those that live in your area or your neighborhood, um, it will help to give a nice reflection of of where there is indeed community engagement. Um, I also have a question I see here from Ms. Grossman once again. Commissioner Grossman, uh, I'm gonna give you the floor and I wanna thank you once more, Mr. Newman, for, for what you've shared. Um, I just had a couple of reflections or question and, and a question. Um, one is that um, the, uh, uh, we know that there's a history of neighborhoods being created essentially by inequity, by redlining and other practices which were intended to segregate. And I was just wondering how you're ensuring that they that yeah, I don't know how this would go. I don't know if it's if if um, you know there would be a benefit to having you know heavily majority black districts and that's good, or if it's not good if maybe the moving, you know, uh, kind of shifting a uh, neighborhood so that there's a, you know, a, a more mi a bigger mix and it's a more integrated neighborhood uh, group uh, would be a benefit. I, you know, I don't know this. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, okay, my other question is basically as we grow and change in configuration, when will this process be repeated? Just as you know, we would just redistrict things every 10 years along with the census will is there a schedule for redistricting once we've districted uh, based on you know changes in the city great questions I, I'm going to answer first but then I'm going to also make sure that the commissioners know that um, I'm, I'm opening the floor for them to comment as well um, you've asked some difficult questions um, prior to us even touching a map or the tool that would create the nine maps that we're charged with creating, we spent time um, learning in detail some of the ugly processes that played out in, in giving the neighborhoods their configuration um, and, and, and their labels in essence, right? We, uh, we also learned the history of how so many things like redlining, um, the implement or the uh, implantation of highways have been just 
totally, they decimated communities. Um, we have limited power as a commission, right? Our, our job is to create these nine maps. We, we do have to understand the historical context in which we're doing the work we're doing. And, and I think each of us is committed to looking at this work through a lens of equity. Um, but when you look at what it might take to undo the injustices that have been done in the past, uh, I think that's a call that will off, that'll have to be made by the people of the communities. And so what we're doing is, is helping to improve the voice of those who are represented by elected figures ultimately. Um, and I think that leads me into the answer for your second question. So how long until we will configure or update again? Um, we as the people, we are empowered to make these choices. We're here today because there was a ballot issue that said, um, do we as Columbus residents think that there needs to be better representation and move from an at-large system into a more representative system? And so that's what we're doing is moving us in that first step of the process. Um, I, I'm not gonna call this a, a good process necessarily, but it's a better process. And, and as, as we the people vote again and make choices, we can move further into the the good process and ultimately get to its best version. Um, we're, we're charged with a limited scope of power and ability, um, and we're charged to create these maps with respect to the historic borders that exist um, and the numbers of people that, that live there. The federal government limits us from um, using certain racial or ethnic demographics in, in, in making the decisions we make, um, but we do have the ability to look at um, some racial breakdown of communities and we can't do what uh, is often called gerrymandering. Um, we, we can't disempower communities and, and, and break up some of the racial composition that might give a certain racial ethnicity their, their power or their voice. So we have to be cognizant of how we might propose map configurations and being aware that what we what we propose is not going to disempower a group of people, especially a group that might have already been disempowered. And so these are very good questions you've asked. I think that that that's partly why we've taken the uh, level of intentionality we we've taken to go through this process. I'd invite you to go and look back at those sessions. We had Kyle Strickland from the Kerwin Institute for Race and Ethnicity give us a great history on 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 the Civil Rights Act and and how. Um, the federal law requires certain things to happen when you're creating districts. Uh, we had uh, Ms. Yu Hao Sauer, uh, who gave us an, an amazing history on the migration of people into Columbus of different ethnic groups and in different refugee categories and what we even call refugees over the decades. Um, it, it, it's a complicated body of work that we're working within, um, but limited power, no, no less. Um, and so I hope I was able to answer your question from my perspective, and I want to open it up as well for other commissioners to share their thoughts. And I see Commissioner Paul is, is, is wanting to speak as well. Yes. Yes. Can I just um, make one small correction? So yes, the process for the map drawing happens every 10 years and um, in line with the census it is technically not by a vote. The process can be changed, um, but if it is changed, that would be via a charter amendment um, that would amend the current charter. So I just want to clarify that the process will happen every 10 years in accordance with the census. Thank you. That's our legal legal counsel, um, attorney Walters, who shared that. And so thank you so much for that, that correction. And Commissioner Paul. Uh, Chair Moore, thank you. Actually, that's what I was also going to mention, uh, that the actual charter amendment that has defined our role also just defines the process by which uh, these maps will be updated over time as population changes and so forth. Um, and so again, encourage you to go out and look at the website that was created at columbus.gov forward slash districting commission because it includes the charter amendment and other documents that define our role in the whole process. So thank you, that's, that's all I wanted to mention. These are very crucial things that you both have added. Thank you so much. And so um, before I hand it over to our next um, question, did we answer what you asked of us? Um, Commissioner Grossman. Yes, that was helpful. Thank, thank you for asking. Um, I do have a question, or I, I'm aware that BJ White, Commissioner White, would like to um, share a question as well. So I'm giving you the floor at this time, Commissioner White. Well, thank you again, Chair Moore. I appreciate the opportunity. 
Um, but I want to mirror a little bit about what uh, Chair Grossman uh, said and try not to uh, mimic her sentiment too much. But I wanted to speak to Chair Andrea Russell's uh, commentary. And I have to agree with you. Um, that was a very feeling testimony. And I wish that um, I wish that we had a lot more citizen advocacy um, that is so eloquently packaged the way that she spoke those concerns. And I can tell you that um, you know when 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 she spoke about the um, the blueprint construction, the um, the structure changes and stormwater uh, uh, diverting programs and, and capture systems that were put into place. You know, there there is a perception that Clintonville has affluence, and there you know, and and many times there is a negative connotation um, that is attached to affluence, and and that is that is a, a very hurtful remark that I've heard. Um, in many forms, not this one, but in many forms. But but I think one of the reasons that gets Clintonville put in that column is the amount of angst uh, th that was spoken about the blueprint construction. Why is this in my front yard? Uh, why why is this being done? Why why is it taking forever? And when you think about those comments from the residents of Clintonville, and you put those. In a, in, a, in a dichotomy and compare those to what Chair Russell is speaking to, who may be hearing, why can I not get help with my wet basement? Why can I not get help with stormwater that is ponding in my yard? Why can I not get the help? And on the flip side of that in Clintonville, um, you know, we, we're complaining because it ruins our aesthetics of our streetscape. So I, I, want to, I want Chair Russell and everybody within your shot of my voice to understand that I recognize that you know, there, is a very, there is a very hurtful connotation when people describe Clintonville as affluent, but I get, I get it because with complaints that are packaged like that about such initiatives when other people are longing for that type of assistance and that type of help and that type of cure, um, it, it makes it very difficult. And I think that there's a lot that can be learned um, with this jurisdictional approach that, that says um, maybe, maybe Clintonville and North Linden ought to be in the same jurisdiction. So to me, it's a, it's a great way to work community to community, neighborhood to neighborhood and help one another. Commissioner White, um, I just want to see if I can reflect what I heard you saying there. Um, I heard you say that uh, the clearest part was that there's a sting that comes with with being labeled as affluent, um, but an acknowledgement of some of your ability to um, convene a voice and 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 really empower a collective voice to get some things done. And you said you'd much rather the focus not be on difference necessarily, but the uh, looking forward to the potential power that might exist if you had a united community joining forces to amplify the voice so that your neighbors who that we've already acknowledged had a historic trauma um the placement of the highways and then the ongoing things that happen as a result of that but you're you're imagining a future where you all might work together um, for the good of a new shared community despite some of the historical pains yes Am sir I correct in it? okay yes. well thank you for sharing that and um and, and, and I hope you were listening, Commissioner White. Um, you're next in the queue. And, and I, I hope you heard that, uh, that extension of, of just community connectedness coming your way from Commissioner B.J. White. So Tiffany White, do you, do you want the floor at this time? Thank you, uh, Chairman Moore. Yes, so I had just a couple of follow-up questions and I wanna thank B.J. because I think that um, these districts will bring neighborhoods together and can amplify community voices. Um, it won't just be the, the, the usual suspects I call myself um, advocating for certain things and come together collectively. So 
um, thank you, BJ, for that. But my questions were, um, the drawing of the maps, you're saying that there's going to be nine maps, is that correct? I'm sorry, three maps, nine districts. Three maps, nine districts, okay. Yes. And with those three maps, I know that they'll probably be on the city's website um, with us up at, opening up um, post-pandemic. How many uh, community review opportunities will there be on each side of town? So the review of the maps, commissioners, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the review process is going to be all online. Can I make a recommendation that we have some type of community review? And I say that because we've, we've found out with COVID that um, broadband is not something that everyone has, number one. And number two, we do have seniors in our community, especially in mine, mm -hmm. that refuse to use technology. So yeah. that's a disservice to some of our older residents um, some of the ones who have blazed the trails for us to be where we are today. Um, and that's not any particular race. That That's all of them. They've fought really hard for lots of things. Um, but there could be some type of community review. Yeah. I, I hear you loud and clear. Um, your request and your comment is on record. Um, we get these maps. Since it, while we will have these maps, our, goal, our, our, our deadline to have these, is September where they'll be public for 30 days. Um, and if I hear you correctly, you're saying um, 30 days of these maps being available online could possibly leave many of the people who have pioneered the formation of our communities. They, they may be prevented from lifting up a valuable voice in, in the process prior to us moving forward. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. Yep. And then we'd, we'd have a meeting in October which again, at this time, uh, it, it, at this time, I can only believe that it would be virtual. Um, but depending on what the world is operating under, um, we may be in person, and then there'd be a second iteration of these maps made available in November, um, and there'd be another 30 days for public comment. Um, I think there's a few ways we might be able to address this challenge, but I definitely want you to hear that what you've presented as a challenge has been heard by the commission. And um, before I, I, I let you finish what you're saying, I want to open the floor for Commissioner Paul because he may have additional things he wants to say related to the same topic. Thank you, sir. And again, I don't mean to dominate the conversation and certainly want to make plenty of space for my fellow commissioners. I did want to make a suggestion, maybe a clarification first, that we will be producing basically three maps, each of which will contain alternatives for the nine districts, right? So we'll be offering Columbus City Council what we think are the three most effective, uh, fairest uh, constructions that we can produce of nine districts that represent and provide the opportunity for our neighborhoods to be represented fairly in terms of the residential requirement for city council members. I believe, first, first of all, I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, the, the Columbus Dispatch and other media perhaps will be able to pick up those maps and publish them because uh, there will really be only three documents. Um, the other thing that occurs to me, and I'm again, I, I can't make this happen, but I could ask staff to pursue it, is the possibility that they might be presented at, for example, uh, recreation centers like the beautiful London Recreation Center where we are. Uh, on signboards so that folks could visit the recreation center and become familiar with those three alternatives and then perhaps share comments on them. Um, having served on the Recreation and Parks Commission in the past, I think that's something the department would be open to if that's something that can be undertaken, uh, understanding this is a city council driven initiative. Uh, so that's uh, perhaps a suggestion uh, of a way that we can reach uh, folks who might not necessarily be able to get online, I think you have a very good point, uh, Commissioner White, uh, and understand exactly what you said. I hope that that uh, there are a few places we've heard that don't have community centers as well. So there are probably other options we could pursue, but I wonder if that might be helpful. Uh, Commissioner White, any comments? Um, yes, thank you, uh, Commissioner Paul. 
Um, there, there are some communities that don't have a rec center at all. But we also have to keep in mind our faith organizations. Maybe they will be willing to open their doors. Um, this is something that's not going to change for 10 years. Um, and I think that we need to be cognizant of those who are just, just not, they don't have the access. I don't want this to be perceived as just another going through the motion kind of situation. Um, my, my other question was Malik, you said, sorry, chair more. No, Malik, you can call me Malik. <laughs> okay. Um, you said that after you do your, your, the first three maps in October, you'll have another review. Will that reduce the number of maps or will that give different alternatives based on the input? And the it'll be the same number of maps. Mm -hmm. Um, just subjected again for public review and any adjustments made based on things we saw or where we might have not met the parameters of what was required of the structure of those maps. So basically an open review, peer review, open review period um, to catch those and then represent again three maps with the nine districts. And, and you can only deviate one percent, is that correct? From well, when, when we talk about the uh, population size yes. of yes. district to district, um, and, and, and that's why some of the things we've heard here tonight have been so, so important. Um, and, and I got to say, it was a beautiful thing that we, we've acknowledged the historic trauma. Um, and we've, we've gotten folks who many times we think are, are totally apart um, to be, be able to begin to share a story of shared connectedness and, and, and seeing that humanity in each other. And so that gives me hope that um, even with that strict requirement of a, a delta of 1%, there's the possibility of, of human beings wanting to work together um, beyond what might have done, been done in the past or because of what's been done in the past, wanting even um, more so to work harder to solve a social problem, right? And, and so just know, please, Commissioner White, that um, th th there is no denying that there's folks who can't get online, but there's people who may have distrust from past historic traumas um, to do a process like this online. And so what you've said has been um, taken in fully by all five of us as, a, as commissioners. And it's something that we will have to uh, make sure that each of us in, in our own internal consciousness, um, that we, we allow that, that voice that you've lifted tonight to be shared all through the rest of this process. So thank you for, for bringing that up the way you did. And thank you for your persistence and, and for being an advocate for you the community you serve. Okay. All right, I may have lost you, but I want you to know that we're all hearing what you said and we're grateful that you shared what you did. Um, at this time, I'm gonna call Mr. Pickney um, who wanted to share his question. Um, hi everyone. Um, okay. Uh, um, okay. So before I got into my question, um, I just wanted to talk about the university district just because um, I just because no one on the university area commission um, was here today to talk about um, the university district. Um, so with that being said, I'm actually a rising senior at Ohio State. So the university district, um, similar to a lot of other communities within Columbus, is one that is extremely um, diverse. Um, obviously, we have the 60,000 students who go to Ohio State, whether they live on campus or live off campus. Um, I think oftentimes, whenever people think of the university district, they just think of Ohio State solely. The university district is so much more than that. In fact, it goes as far east as um, to about I-71 before that, um, as far south down to Fifth Avenue, um, and all the way north over to Glen Echo. Um, I think it's more to remember um, that just like many communities, um, the university district has multiple parts. You have the off-campus thing, um, but one of the things that I have noticed uh, during my short time here um, at, um, at Ohio State and li living in the university district and also as a city planning major too, um, is the bunch, is the lots of development that is currently going on in the university district. Um, I think that it is great 
to see that we it is that the area is being revitalized and that you are you know having these new apartments come in however one of the things that has troubles me very much um is that as a result of these which seem to be very commercialized um there seems to be a sense of a loss of the sense of place or history um in the university district um for example um in the past a lot of very a very a lot of very um, popular campus bars um have been taken down um in i mean at least, you know at least have been replaced with other things um like maybe like replaced with the with the jersey mics for example or just your commercialized thing like that and while that may not seem like much these bars for are indicative of the history and tradition um that is in the university districts again i'm just using this as an example you again have plenty of stores and plenty of mom and pop establishments that seem to be getting replaced by this commercialized development um one of the things that i that i think that within the university district as a result of this development there is this divide um i think when you go east of high street when you go east of high street and west of high street um, whereas it seems like along um, east, uh, right off of High Street, you're having a lot of this development. Um, it seems to be that when you go, um, then when you go west of High Street, a lot of the development's a lot newer. But when you go to to the east, um, east side, uh, when you go east of High Street, um, there are a lot of safety concerns from some students. I know that it is very common occurrence for students to get um, to have their cars broken into. Um, so, what, so all of that to say, I think that when we are, um, I, I think that going forward, um, as these districts are being drawn, it is important to remember that in the university district, it is not a monolith, um, and that there is a lot of people going on, that there's a lot going on in the university districts. Um, again, with that being said, um, talking about safety, one of the major issues of a lot of students um, has been the relationship between um, students and and OSUPD and CPD, um, there have been a lot of um, there have been a lot of efforts um, to actually go ahead and you know, for some students who even want to cut ties, you even want the university to cut ties with CPD. So again, kind of just you know, as we do talk about community police relations, that there are a lot, there is a lot of issues of that um, even in the university district. So I guess with that being said, with the university district, um, I, my question is to you is um, I guess my question to you is. Um, is how do you, going forward, see the diversity of the university district and its different parts um, being included in the, um, I guess, kind of just like in the university district, how do you think the, the, the needs and concerns of students are going to be included in the redistricting process? Commissioner Paul, I see you, you want to answer this question. The floor is yours. I'm not sure I can actually answer the question, but I can agree that it's a, a rather interesting question and something that we're going to need to take up. One of the things that occurs to me, and, and I, perhaps this be as appropriate during our working session, but because you've asked the question here, uh, I'll bring it up now. Our, again, our, our goal is to create maps uh, that create districts of equal size uh, in order to reach a, a better system for electing city council members. Uh, so it's related to voting. However, I suspect, and perhaps you can help me understand if I'm mistaken, many of the students of OSU are not registered here uh, to vote here in Ohio. They're registered in their home communities, or at least they're not registered in Franklin County, and they may not be eligible to vote for city council members. Uh, that creates kind of an unusual situation where we do still need to be intentional about populations of districts, but we're not necessarily talking about voters in a very large district, which would contain the university. So I don't have an answer for that at this point. I think that's something that our commission will need to wrestle with. Um, ultimately, we wanna make sure that the population is represented fairly, but not all of those students, again, will be voting for a city council member. Um, so I'm not sure how we address that. And I just thought, thank you, uh, Chair Moore, for letting me express that rather perplexed response. <laughs> yeah, no, I have the I have the same sense of wonderment over that 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 voter versus population number. Um, yeah. We're going to have to do some homework to to figure out, you know, how how that how that's really decided. Great, thank you for stirring that 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 intrigue in us, uh, Mr. Kinski. 
did you have an, an additional question as well? Um, I, I, so, um, so I could actually kind of uh, talk a little bit more about the voter thing. Um, one of the things that I have been involved. Oh. So prior to letting you talk, I do have another question I want to screen. Yes, of course. Go and, for it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so again, I thank you, Mr. Pinsky, for lifting up that question. You've provoked some thought. Um, we will be doing our homework to have a, a, a more, to have a more astute understanding of such a nuanced thing we're going to need to do. Um, but I, I have Madam President, President Ward from the Northland Council, uh, who has the floor at this time. The floor is yours, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, I apologize if I missed the answer to this, but what is the closing date for the survey? Yes, we uh, tonight we shared that uh, the 2nd of July of this okay. year will be the last day. Um, and we're encouraging all of you to please share that with folks in your community, because that is another form of representation. Just us seeing the numbers of those surveys coming in and seeing if we can see trends and themes within them. So thank you for, for asking. Thank you. And I, I had one other question, and that was, um, I know that the Census Bureau usually just publishes to the public just big lump sums of like data on Columbus. But I do know that they collect, because I worked in the, for the Census for several years in the 90s, that they do collect um, more broken down information on these different areas. And so um, I'm wondering how much of that you were... Um, I apologize there. Which <laughs> <laughs> of that you were able to um, get for your to work with with your um, endeavors? So if, if I hear you correctly, President Ward, you're asking how effectively are we using census data? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and if it's really broken down for you, if you were able to access that. Yes. yes, because of COVID, and again, commissioners, correct me if I'm telling a tall tale, um, but because of COVID this year, um, that, that valuable data that we often have from the census um, is not yet in. So we're, we're going to get that data um, late in our process. Um, we're going to go ahead and start beginning to make our nine districts and, and make our three maps, um, but we will have already probably begun to craft maps by the time we get updated data that might change how we uh, propose that we uh, divide our, our community up into these nine districts. Okay, because so. I, I did see that they, they have published the 2020 data for Columbus online, um, but it's not broken down. Um, that's kind of usually behind the scenes where they give the more broken down numbers. Yes, yeah. and, and I have Commissioner Paul who had a hand up. I'm thinking he might want to share something related to that. One moment. And Chair Moore, I'm going to sit on my hands from here on out because I feel like I'm talking too much. But please do not do not. This is this is democracy at work. So please continue I, to talk. I think that uh, NCC President Ward is referring also to the American Community Survey data, which the Census Bureau also compiles. That goes into a lot of information, a lot of detail about demographics, uh, income. Uh, data that is not strictly speaking just population or within census tracts, but really describes kind of the nature of a community. I believe that we're very limited in how we can use that data. Our primary objective is to define these districts based on population, but uh, you know, again, try to determine the boundaries of the districts so that they are sensitive and aware of communities of common interest and so forth. But what we can't do is sort of dig down into the, the layers that deal with income, uh, ethnicity, religion, other things. Uh, I was are... not, sorry, sir. I was not no. suggesting that. I'm simply talking about population. Okay. Uh, and so the American Community Survey then is something else. Um, the data to uh, sort of inform our decisions about these maps will not be available until later this year is not available now unless something has changed just in the past few weeks. Uh, so that information has not been published and will not be available for the latest census until later this year. That's been the subject of some hand wringing on our part and folks at the city because we thought we would have the most current data. We'll be working from data that probably includes population estimates 
uh, as current as 2018. And perhaps there have been some estimates that have been updated, but not new census data. All right, think, Commissioner think Paul, think again, we would have missed so much if you uh, did what you called sitting on your hands for that. Thank you so much for um, just going through that process. Thank you, President Ward. Um, I do believe that I have another question from um, Tiffany White, Commissioner uh, White. I'm going to give you the floor once again. No, I don't have an additional question. I'll take my hand on. I apologize. Thank you, ma'am. And BJ White, should I believe that you have a, another question as well? All right. I believe that may be um, hands that were remaining up accidentally. And so I've not yet uh, shared that if you would rather send your thoughts in, your thoughts and your responses via email, you can send those to crdc at columbus.gov. Um, there's still time for you to submit a question or two, um, but if you've not yet sent it in tonight, you can still email it. Um, and again, those who are viewing on Facebook or YouTube, please send those comments in through the comment section, um, as I said earlier. So tonight we're here as a commission to hear from each and every one of you. Um, and as we hear from you, we do have some questions we wanna ask to better understand the dynamics of the communities you call home and how they interact with other communities in our, in our area. Um, as I'm waiting for questions, commissioners, are there things that you wish to ask or share at this time? I am okay. sitting on my hands, Mr. All Chair. right. The other, the other three commissioners, any, any uh, questions that you have? And so I, I wanna thank everyone who joined this call this evening. We heard from many of our areas commissioners. Thank you for the, the work you do to represent the neighborhoods and the communities you call home. Um, and, and I thank you all for your honest and frank engagement this evening. Um, it created a great discussion tonight. Um, we've completed at this time the community discussion portion of our meeting. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and continuing in, continue into our working session. Um, and we do invite you if, you, if you would like, you can join us uh, and stay on this call, but feel free to go ahead and be with your family at this time if you would like. Um, I do want to share prior to us departing this evening that our next meeting will be one week from today. We will be meeting on Wednesday, June 23rd at 530. Um, we're going to focus at that time on some of our most vulnerable residents and some of our most vulnerable communities. All are invited. And so we recognize that far too often the voices that we need to hear are, are voices that aren't lifted up. And so we want to hear from every voice as these decisions are being made. Um, and so we've created a specific space um, next week on June 23rd at 530 for this, this precise reason. And so... Um, Look out for more information on how you can join. That'll be coming out soon. And you can get that by going to www.columbus.gov uh, forward slash districting commission. Um, and again, please take the survey and you can find that survey link at the same place I just shared, www.columbus.gov forward slash districting commission. And if you have any questions in the meantime, please make sure you send those to crdc at columbus.gov. And so I thank you all again. And at this time we will begin our, our working session of the meeting. All right. And so commissioners, thank you all for, for all you shared tonight, for the great questions we've heard and um, for some of the parameters you helped to set so that we can um, really be of service to our neighbors. Um, what, I, what I shared tonight, I really don't have an agenda, but I do have a link to a document um, over these last few weeks, if we've gone, as we've gone from community to community, people have spoken. And, and my guess is, is, is David Paul, Commissioner Paul has heard um, different things than I've heard. And, and Commissioner Frost has heard different things um, than, than was said over here. And so what I want us to do is to be able to take our notes and consolidate them. Um, and I'll add the other regions on there. That's just some of our more recent areas. But if we can begin to share our reflections within this document so that, again, when we sit down and we're we're charged with creating our nine maps um, and, and we think that the voice of Commissioner White, Tiffany White, needs to be lifted up, let, let, let's be reflective of that. If we see that three of us have heard what Tiffany White said 
and, and we're about to make a decision that's not reflective of that thing that was shared, then shame on us. Um, and, and I think as we've gone around to the many diverse communities, we've heard a wide range of things. And so this shared document will be our way to kind of echo um, really a reflection of the voices we've heard. Um, I've gotten to feel like I can see many of the neighborhoods that are part of a Columbus that I've never stepped foot in, embarrassingly. But I do feel a little more closely connected to those neighborhoods. And, um, and again, by putting our notes in there, um, we can really begin to be informed as, as we do what we've been charged to do. And so I want to open the, the floor for any of us to speak. Is there anything that anyone else would like to share? Um, I think tonight, um, thank you, Chair Moore. Um, the North side, as we knew, was ex incredibly diverse. Um, <laughs> and it just reiterated how difficult this process will be. Um, I do want to uplift what um, Ms. Tiffany White had mentioned about, you know, maybe some non-traditional ways of gathering community input. Um, when these three maps are out for public comment. Um, I think that that's an important part of the public buy-in process um, and happy to kind of think through what that could look like, but really want to make sure that um, the public feels that they were engaged through this process. So I, again, just wanna uplift what she said earlier. Yes, and, and, and I know I have what I feel to be a reflection of what I heard her share as suggestions um, about how we could lead folks to feel that they were more publicly engaged. Can anybody else give a summary or a reflection of what they heard? Um, what were some of the suggestions we heard that might reflect us really doing um, what would be a responsible thing to be um, inclusive of, of folks that might not want to log online to do that? Anyone have anything from their notes? Again, I think it's important that we lift up the diverse voices. I know what I, what I heard and I recorded, but um, I think between the five of us, somewhere in the middle lies the yeah. actuality. Uh, Chair Moore, I know that it was, I think, I'm not sure that it was actually expressed what, for example, Commissioner White had in mind in terms of community engagement with the maps. I think she was just very concerned that there be community engagement with the maps. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that our neighborhood liaisons may also be a tool that could be used to share copies of the maps with uh, the various organizations that they meet with on a regular basis. Um, and that actually brings me back briefly to a thought that we had at a previous meeting, actually when we heard from Mr. Hui from Neighborhood Services about whether uh, it may be possible that the districts that we're talking about here could serve, serve a dual purpose. In addition to serving a purpose for electing council members whether there might be some interest uh, in aligning the neighborhood liaison districts in the same way with the council districts. Uh, something to think about. Uh, an earlier speaker tonight said something very similar, I think, that in terms of services provided in neighborhoods, it'd be great if uh, those, I think it was Ms. White from Clintonville, um, if perhaps there was a uh, component that provided better service through neighborhood services, utilities, and other departments. Um, so neighborhood liaisons are, are one aspect that may be able to help get the information out in the community. As I mentioned earlier, recreation centers. Um, but I'm not sure if we actually heard specific ideas. I don't think we'd be able to meet, obviously, just in the interest of time, because time will be very short once the maps are produced. Uh, for council to evaluate them, for the public to evaluate them, and then to select maps. But uh, I don't think we'll be able to meet with individual civic associations. That's where the neighborhood liaisons may come in and help us out. Right. And, and I think I heard her say faith, faith houses of worship, and, and, and faith, faith leaders. Yep. I just want to clarify that council does not actually evaluate the maps until we submit the final three maps to council for evaluation. In the interim, they essentially do not have um, a Any say input. in the maps um, until they are submitted to council for those final three maps. The three maps that are submitted um, to the public for public comment review are for review by the public. I mean, council members are technically the public, so they can also view them. But in terms of actually um, giving, actually looking at the three maps, 
that is reserved for the final process. Thank you. Can I ask a clarifying question? So, so if I hear you correctly, you're saying that the maps that we might have as proposed maps, until we've given them into council, they can be available for anyone to see? So what I'm saying is when you when you re, when you do your when you submit your first three maps is that those maps will go to the public for 30 days. Um, when you pull them back after that comment review period and you put new ones out, those will go to the public for 30 days. So anyone can give public comment review during that period. The whatever maps you vote on to say, okay, these are the three maps we would like to submit to council. Those mm -hmm. are the maps that council will evaluate and it will choose one of those maps as the final map. Is How do we define what it means to go to the public or who gets to define what going to the public means? Going to the public means they are released to the public. So, I mean, that would be via the website or however we decide to release the maps, but the maps will be made available to the public in a medium that's readily available to them. Um, the The tricky part of that is like, what is considered a general mean that most people would have access to does not always include everyone having access to. Um, like you had mentioned, even if we put them in the rec centers, there's not a rec center in every part of town. So if they don't have a computer, they don't have a rec center nearby in town, it's going to require some engagement um, on their part to go to those places or to go to the library to get that engagement with the maps. So I think a part of that is, you know, for public engagement, if they want to be engaged in the process, taking that extra step to make sure they get to view those maps. Understood. Uh, if I could uh, ask Ms. Walters, is there a requirement uh, from a legal perspective or otherwise that the maps only be presented in a city facility or can they be presented in other facilities? We've heard about uh, places of worship, uh, the Columbus Public Library, obviously folks could log on there, but maybe they don't want to do that. Maybe they just want to look at a big uh, signboard that has a map. Uh, can the, these other places also host the maps? Um, there is no requirement in charter that says where the maps have to be placed or that they can't be placed in certain areas. Um, I think that generally because it's a city process, the thought would be that they would be placed in city facilities, but there's nothing that I have read that has prohibited from being placed in other places. Um, but that would be with the permission of those other areas to uh, permit the maps to be placed there. Of course. Uh, I do have a question. Um, so I know that we have to submit three maps to council for consideration. Is there anything that prohibits us for having multiple, more than three iterations of maps for public comment? Um, that part I think is unclear in terms of whether you can submit multiple maps, more than three maps, but because you're getting ending, ending up submitting three maps to council when you submit them, I think just for purposes of uh, continuity, um, and clarity, I think inconsistency, I think it might be best to do it that way, but I don't see anything that prohibits you from doing more than one map. But if you present too many options, um, that might make it more confusing for the public. So that's something to consider. Thank you, Commissioner Sarasvela. Commissioner Frost, please, the floor is yours. I just kind of a follow up on that. Um, I can see how both work are could be confusing. So I think there might be some districts that are really clear cut, but there might be some that we have to do a couple variants. Um, and so I'm glad that we might have that as a potential. Um, but then when we're talking about how we're distributing these these maps, um, yes, we'll have the pub. Hopefully, we'll have a physically public um, sessions in different quadrants of town. But I would also hope that um, when we think about what kind of media we might be able to share these in, that we go across uh, diverse media outlets, not just the common ones, not just the TV stations, but also like this week, some of the diverse papers and definitely um, some that are in uh, different languages um, that we have a larger population in. I think that's only fair. I'm sure that um, the media will be happy to have these maps. I'm sure we will get several requests to get those maps. Um, in terms of different languages, I don't, I don't know what that would look like only because um, when you have them in different languages, eventually it's going, to, it's going to go back to to English. So I don't know exactly what that looks like in terms of translating the different neighborhoods. Um, so I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying that I'm unsure. Oh yeah, I didn't mean the map exactly because the maps are the maps. Um, but the uh, like some of the stuff for overview of the process when we're rolling it out, like I don't know if it, this currently is in multiple languages, but at least for sure like 
of Spanish and Somalian and or and some others that might make sense when we're talking about some of our populations. We do have um, the survey stuff and some of our other public publications that we rolled out um, that are in multiple languages, and we are in contact with several different media outlets that service um, different populations that speak different languages and engaging them so that they can share that with their communities. Do we have a schedule for when we might first publish the maps the first time? And then the 30 days after that? We do have a schedule. Um, the the schedule as, as it stands is the first set of maps would like to be released on September 1st um, and for and they will go out for 30 days. The remainder of that schedule is kind of flexible. Um, and the reason being is that we will be getting that information from the census, hopefully on September 30th. Um, and so in an attempt to continue to be transparent, we may attempt to um, release the maps more than, more than a second time, um, but that will be determined based on the census data um, if we will need to reduce to release the maps more than twice. But we do have a hard deadline for when we must submit them to city council, correct? Yes, uh, city council yeah. must vote on the maps by December 31st, 2021. Um, so you all will need to submit the maps to them before that date, um, depending on if, we, if the maps need to be released more than twice, that will change the time frame. Um, but that is something that is an ongoing um, determination based on when when exactly we, we received the census data, which is supposed to be September 30th. Um, if we get it earlier, that could make things a little bit easier. Um, but at this point, September 30th is the estimated date of re receiving the census data. And do we have to give the maps to council 30 days before that vote? No, sir. Good question. Commissioner Cagle. I just have to say that I feel honored to to share a commission with you four folks. Um, the questions you, you raised, the empathy you helped to amplify. Um, this is, it just feels like we're doing the right thing. And, and so I'm encouraged moving forward and, and I look forward to our continued work. And if no one else has anything for the good of the order, um, Commissioner Cabot, please, the floor is yours. Just, just one last thing. What's our location for next week? Or can we all stay home? I will share that with you offline, Commissioner. Thank you. All right. If no one has anything for the good of the order, um, again, I, I thank you all for making time, um, serving in this role, and, and for all that you're bringing to this process. Um, and with that, I'm going to bid this meeting adjourn. Thank you.